you know our organization structure starts with business group and which is the topmost organization and after that we have legal entities sorry ledgers we have business group within the business group we have the ledger within the ledgers we have legal entities within the legal entity we have operating units and each operating unit should have at least one inventory organization and each inventory organization should have at least one sub inventory and each sub inventory will be having a different locators that locator is nothing but a kind of coordinators like row rack bin like x y z okay because basically these are the coordinates by having those coordinates you are going to locate the item exactly where it is located so in this process the multi arc structure so whenever you go for any of any process like is it truck to pay or you are going to order to cash or make to order whatever it may be everything comes from multi arc structure because whatever we are discussing right now we are discussing the concepts of inventory inventory means it is inventory organization level when we are talking about inventory organization level at inventory organization level we have different transactions we have our manufacturing we have our shipping shipping education and if you want to receive some items from the supplier we have to receive and store in the storeroom that is nothing but inventory so all these transactions are going to be with inventory now after entering into entering to one particular organization let us say you are entering into one particular organization these are all organizations if you open your application as it is real time application we built all these organization so this is the one of our clients application so we built it so we defined as per their requirement as per their locations we defined as per us uh, locations uh, with respect to different states but if you see your application within instance there we have sital manufacturing detroit organizations we have many organizations so there you can see m1 m2 like that always make try to make use of m1 m1 is nothing but sital manufacturing which is having both SCM and manufacturing because any organization if you see here see this one and this one having discrete that means what there is a manufacturing in this particular or uh, these particular organizations only this is one BRI and Ooster okay these are the two organizations where we have discrete manufacturing but whereas the remaining organizations are are distribution center dc means distribution center texas okay tennessee so ohio so north carolina florida like that we have so california so like that we have different distribution centers you should understand an inventory organization is nothing but a warehouse that warehouse can be a manufacturing unit or a distribution center so we are discussing the inventory that inventory is nothing but a warehouse in the warehouse what are the transactions going to be used let us see yesterday we were discussing item master so i have to select one organization when you are using inventory applic inventory responsibility we are going to work in inventory then definitely you have to select one responsibility what is that responsibility <clears throat> in inventory we have one particular organization so let me let me take one organization this is rooster which is having both manufacturing and supply chain management so after selecting the organization you already clicked on sub inventory transfer have you remembered we clicked on this particular sub inventory transfer then 
in this Java initiated form, like we have the sovereignty transfer form has been opened. But if you want to close it, you can close by click you, clicking on a cross map. Then definitely, whatever you could see here, whatever you could see here, these are the functions, menus available in inventory responsibility that you can see in inventory responsibility. All these plus icons, wherever the plus icons are there, it is as same as that and which are called as menu. And if you expand each menu by clicking, then we have sub menus within that plus icon. We have some more plus icons. Then these are called as sub menus. And within the sub menu, if you expand this, then you have to double click. Okay. So when you expand this, then again we are having functions. These are all functions. So in the transactions, we have sub inventory transfer. That's what you could see here. If I click here, the same thing will be open. This time it won't ask you organization. Why? Already you are at booster organization. See? So that is the reason. So we have all these menus, submenus, and functions. And these icons I told you yesterday plus means expand this particular plus. If you click on plus plus, it will expand all plus icons. If you click on minus, it will collapse this one. You see, I expand it. If I want to collapse this, if you click on this, that's it, it will collapse. So if you click on plus plus, it will expand all these plus icons. If you click on this, see. So you have to remember this. When you click on minus minus, it will collapse all pluses. No, you have to remember this. So yesterday we were discussing, let us come to the subject, items. What is item? Item is the basic one by which we are selling the item. By using that item, you are selling the item, you are manufacturing the item, you are buying the item. And what are the item you are using for your organization? By manufacturing, if you take for example Tata Motor company where it is manufacturing car and it should maintain all the raw materials and sub assemblies and finished good items. What is raw material? What is sub assembly? What is finished good item? Raw material means to manufacture car what you would require. You would require bolts, nuts, tires, chassis, body, brakes, clutch, steering, engine, infrastructure, deck system, stereo system, then if you have GPS, then so rear mirrors, so all these lights, lights, then body, spoiler, antenna, so all these things, you know, these are all, some of the items are sub-assemblies, some of the items are raw materials, some of the items are finished goods. What is finished good? Car itself is a finished good. So end product is called finished product. So we have all these items. We have all these items. But every item, if you want to track in the system, in your organization, what are the inventory you are maintaining and all those items to be defined in the system by using item master form. What is that item master form? You can see here, if you expand items, we have master item, we have organization item. What is master item and what is organization item? Master item, it is very important question. If you don't know this difference, there is no point. See, what is master item and what is organization item? Master item is the one where we are going to define all the items. Does it mean that items can be used for transactions? No. Even though you defined all the items in master item, you cannot use a single item for your transactions. Why? It is simple. The item which has been defined in the master item is not having any access to any particular organization. Means any organization is having no more organizations are having access to the item 
that was the reason that is the reason no single organization can access these items which are defined in the master that means what what is master listen carefully it's very important point master it is master item is the one where you are going to define all the items all the items does it mean that all the items are going to be used for all the organizations no why only some of the items are related to organizations organization means warehouses for some of the organizations this item is no more related item why if you take one company this is very important concept listen carefully an organization organization is so big having different distribution centers across the state across the country across the world like g general electricals okay so it is so big and its business also diversified into different sectors how let us say we have g healthcare g home appliances g electricals then what else we have many g g aviations g oil and gas we have all these are coming under g group only but we have different business units they might be having one business group or multiple business groups but within the business group they have different ledgers like india ledger china ledger or asia ledger europe ledger us ledger canada ledger australia ledger antarctica ledger like that you have many ledgers what is the purpose of ledger it is meant for financial activities okay so we have g is having different companies into different sectors and each sector like let us say one sector g is maintaining one company meant for one sector then which is having different branches let us say business group of g is having multiple ledgers why we are going to have multiple ledgers it's very simple whenever there is a currency difference whenever there is a calendar difference whenever there is a chart of account difference and convention difference we are going to have different ledgers any one of them i told you four c's out of four c's even a single c is having different then we are going to have another ledger so that was that is the reason we are going to have multiple ledgers but each ledger should have one legal entity that legal entity meant for the name itself is indicating legal entity takes care of all the legal issues taxation rules regulations all these things now when you go for multiple branches across the regions like europe region us region asia region each region is having its own organization if you take for india india is maintaining one branch which is head of head for all the indian distribution centers for g electricity g head office let us say we are having at mumbai then it is having branches across the cities across the states and 
each branch wants to be independent and they want to track their balance sheets profit loss and sales procure payments receivables all these things they want to maintain separate what are these so what i am talking like what is payables what is receivables payables means something one branch like g branch which is existing in one particular area bought some products and they have to pay if mumbai branch is buying mumbai branch itself should pay to the supplier hyderabad branch even though that is g they won't pay means what so let us be separate my branch and your branch but both are coming under same umbrella but you track your transactions you track your trial balance balance sheet profit loss sales manufacturing everything i want separate i don't want to share with them and they should not share with me even though we are coming under same g umbrella when you get this situation we are going to have different what kind of is it different business group no it religion no legal entity no when you don't want to share your profit loss balance sheet trail balance or whatever it may be then we are going to have different operating units when you are having different operating units that's it your data is secured you cannot share if you have if you want to share then you can share there is an option multi org access control we call it as moac multi org access control there is a release 12 functionality where in earlier versions it was not available operation operating unit you defined as an operating unit that's it you cannot share your data with another operating unit similarly anybody can cannot see the data related to other operating units but in release 12 we have moac if you enable that and what are the access you give accordingly you can see the data so we are discussing items now operating unit is the one which is having actual company which is doing the transaction actual branch what is that branch that is nothing but inventory organization each operating unit should have its own inventory sub inventory organization which is nothing but warehouse and that is the reason the company maintains different branches and each branch can be a manufacturing unit can be a distribution center what is manufacturing unit which manufactures okay whereas distribution center what are the item you manufacture let us distribute the same item to the different customers and in case you are buying and distribute accordingly if something is required at certain branch you buy it and distribute to that particular branch so that you can reach whenever there is a customer order from that particular area you can reach to that customer within the time from that distribution center even though you might have received the order but you are very far away but you can ask customer to take the delivery from so and so branch which is nearer to the customer location so that is the reason companies always maintains distribution center okay now we have master item and organization item we have master item and organization item i have given the example of ge is having different sectors the items in one sector will not be coming in under another sector 
let us take for example home appliances is one sector and no item comes under healthcare or g electricals or g oil and gas so what happened the items you use in one particular company g company will not be used in another company of g that means your items are different their items are different but both are coming under g if that is the case what are the items you define in the master all those items we are going to define in one master but you can give the accessibility to the respective organization as per the requirement i study we define one item see if i define i define one item right let us see that item if you go to master item how to find the item after opening if you know the item code if you don't know the item code then we have to search like this go to view find what is the item you define you don't know the item code let us search click on the list of values then if you don't know the exact like item code you can enter if you don't know anything just enter percentage click ok it will show you all the items in the list see how many items are there if you see the bottom 7363 items are existing now all these are items but i defined yesterday laptop item right so this is the item we defined yesterday have you observed laptop with 500 gb or disk having windows 7 as an operating systems then with high definition click ok then find i got the item but it is master can you see that see in the top left hand side corner is having master item whereas this is the master item it is item code description with what unit this item is going to be measured is that primary secondary unit of measure what is unit of measure with what unit of with what unit item is getting measured you know you are going to measure the item by units only you measure the items like apples by dozens or numbers or each is means what each is a primary number is can be primary or secondary or dozen can be secondary or like you have multiple unit of measures and there is a relation what is that relation one dozen equal to 12 numbers one dozen equal to 12 each is so like that we have this particular item is defined yesterday and we have to make sure all these tabs are having different attributes what is the attribute these are all attributes check boxes or details whatever it may be all these are attributes so there are certain areas which are indicated by tabs and by going to each tab you have different attributes to be enabled and certain attributes to be disabled as per the client requirement so to enable respect to attributes what you have done you know we simply gone to copy from go to tools copy from template what is template template is very important question what is template it is predefined names where what of the check boxes are available here in this form all these will be available in this templates and we have to make sure whenever you apply this template what are the attributes to be enabled what are the attributes to be disabled you have to design the template first and then when you select the template by giving a name if it is inventory item create with inventory item as a template if it is purchased item 
to create a template purchased item and for a purchased item what are the attributes to be disabled what are the attributes to be enabled enable it or disable it that can be applied simply while defining the item so that all the respective attributes from the respective tabs can be enabled okay now yesterday we applied a template what is that template that is finisher good template finisher good template so let us see how this finisher good template has been defined okay we applied after applying all these respective attributes will be enabled if something is disabled means in that template itself is it's not enabled okay see so we have to enable all the respective okay retainable rm inspection required financing allowed all these are over shipment in case you asked 100 customer asked 100 you can ship 120 also so it is a master item having item code description different tabs and in each tab we have different attributes and each attributes indicates some characteristic all these attributes are going to decide the items characteristic how the item should behave that behavior comes from these attributes only so what are the attributes to be enabled what are the attributes to be disabled that you disable in the template and I give you a name as a finished good then apply the template whatever you enabled in the template whatever you disabled in the template the respective attributes can be disabled can be enabled by applying that template next concept is that only I will show you what is the template right now let us complete the item first I have given the item code and description then we have unit of measure primary secondary then we have all these tabs in order management tab what are to be enabled invoicing tab what are to be enabled processing manufacturing what to be enabled ours is not processing manufacturing I told you yesterday what is the difference between process manufacturing and discrete manufacturing the process manufacturing is the one where we have recipes what is the recipes if you are cooking you want recipes right similarly if you want to manufacture one item you want recipes basically the chemical factories chemicals or cement factories process manufacturing can be defined like this the one which can be reverted then in in the process of getting the material that you used in the process of manufacturing for example car you manufactured car car is ready level and you don't want you dismantle the car take it take out the engine brake clutch steering tires body stereo light all these things take out and keep in the respective areas however there is no finisher code you dismantled and you got back your items in the process manufacturing in the process manufacturing and there is a finisher good but to manufacture that finisher good you would require certain chemicals limestone color okay all these are items you consume those items as a part of limestone granules chemicals and all those things and prepare the cement bag once cement is manufactured from the cement i want back I want all the items to be reverted and kept in the inventory can you do that for cement okay I made a juice I want fruits back from the finished product what is finished product juice can you get it no that's what where it is irreversible is the process manufacturing where it is reversible for example car you dismantle everything and kept it and you can keep in your, your inventory that is called 
So we have discrete manufacturing and process manufacturing. Okay. Now, after that, you save the record. You save the record. Then, the important task is defining the item in the master item will not help you to do the transactions in any of those inventory organizations. Then what to do? You have to go to organization assignment. This is master only. Assignment can be done from tools. Organization assignment. When you click on that, see, you defend in the master. That is nothing but this is the one master organization. In the master organization, we are going to defend the items with primary unit of measure getting enabled. Then for the remaining organization also, I want to use this item in their inventory. Then definitely can sell at all. In case this item, in case this item is you not used in the in one particular organization, and we will we have to disable that. But once it has been enabled and you have done certain transactions, then you cannot disable. There is a procedure for that. We will be discussing that. So you should be very careful while defining the item for which organizations this item can be useful. You enable for those those organizations only. Then if you select one particular organization as this one, anyway we define the item in the master item. Now I am going for booster discrete in which we have org attributes. When you click on org attributes, it will open the same item form again. But this time, this is organization item. Have you observed here? Organization item. That is master item. When you go for organization item, same item code, description, everything. And you have the flexibility to change something still. If you want to disable this, you can disable. Okay. So you can disable that. Okay. So whenever there is enable, so something is something has to be enabled, you, you can enable. Something you want to disable, you can disable. Okay. So that is what here we have different. So checkbox is grayed out. That means whenever it is grayed out, that is called master control. Whenever it is enabled, that is arc control. So like that we have different checkboxes. These are checkboxes. These are attributes. Somebody calls attributes. Somebody says checkboxes. We have to enable. Then we have to save it. So, so that organization item you assign to respect to organization to use this item that has been defined in the master for their transactions. And then having the characteristics by enabling the respective attributes but still we didn't complete the concept of organization item and master item i'll give a real-time example i'm saying something can be disabled something can be enabled in the respective forms in the organization item and the same can be disabled here same can be enabled in another organization here by opening the respective organization item how? Simple example. Tata Motor is having different branches. We have Tata Motor branch in Gujarat in Coimbatore. We have one item. Interesting item is Tata Nano. When I say Tata Nano, it is getting manufactured in only Gujarat. Do you agree for this? Yes. Nowhere else it is manufactured. 
it is manufactured only at Gujarat okay does it mean that we are getting only Tata Nano Tata Nanos in only Gujarat we can see Tata Nanos in Hyderabad also Coimbatore, Bangalore, Calcutta then how can you see those items in the respective states means what the Tata Nano is getting manufactured at Gujarat and from that warehouse as and when required getting transferred to the another organization that is Hyderabad okay okay but you have to remember the characteristic of that particular Tata Nano in Gujarat is different from Hyderabad in what manner it's very simple Tata Nano is always getting manufactured in Gujarat if it is Gujarat form, Gujarat organization, let us take this, this is Gujarat, then bills of material should be standard, bomb allow should be enabled and in the working process, make or buy should be selected. It is, so you have working process, then we have all the built-in WIP should be enabled, see. And in the respect to organization, like in Gujarat, these things will be enabled, whereas in Hyderabad should be disabled. Means what? The same item is having different characteristics. It is a manufacturing item. When I say Gujarat, when I say something else other than Gujarat, it is purchased item. Why? The another organization is buying that item from Gujarat. For Gujarat, it is manufactured item. That means manufacturing attributes to be enabled. For Hyderabad, it is purchased item. So manufacturing should be disabled for Hyderabad. And purchasing should be disabled for this particular organization which has shipped. So that is the reason G is the example I have given having different sectors and one sector items are not coming into another sector then we are going to have different masters and one master will be having those set of items another master we can have another set of items okay now so after that we have the organization item what are the changes you want you have to change it and save it that's it take the item code then you can use this item in your transactions this is what the item master and organization item item master is the one where you have to define all the items in the master only but whereas organization item is is the one item related or specific to that particular organization having transactions in those respective organizations accordingly how if I say Tata Nano in Gujarat the transaction like you are going to manufacture a completion transaction whereas if you go for another organization where it is not getting manufactured simply you may receive finished good and as a distribution center you are, you are using that center simply you can ship the item from there to the customer ship to location so this is what item master and organization item now I told you template is very important if you don't know what is template item master template you cannot define the item perfectly why in each tab we have more than 300 attributes means more than 300 checkboxes and values to be selected right 
now template go to setup there is items menu open templates I applied the template you know that at the rate finished good right at finished good this is what I applied let us see how it has been defined whatever you define here that will be available to apply to the respective item fine okay open when you open when you open what are the attributes what are the check boxes available in the master form all are available in the column wise first column second column all are available see some are enabled some are disabled so whenever I apply this template whatever is enabled here that will be enabled by default in the item and whatever is disabled here that will be disabled by default simple so it's very important question what is the item template template is the one which is predefined one which where what attributes to be enabled what attributes to be disabled is prefeded like it is predefined and you apply to the item whenever it is required see then you can see one more controlled at organization and master if you see some of the things are master some of the things are arg wherever we put arg that can be editable checkbox in the organization attributes wherever it is master it won't let you to change as it will be grayed out when it is master if you try to update in the organization level I have shown you that is grayed out you cannot update that's it it's very simple so item template is very important because every item will be defined by applying the template only because <clears throat> without applying the template you cannot define the item otherwise you have to go to each tab and enable the respective attributes and there is a possibility of doing the mistake so templates should be defined as per the requirement of the client and you have to make sure the respective checkboxes are enabled on disabled this is item master now we have certain transactions what are those transactions we have certain transactions to be discussed as a part of class in the transactions we have receivings whenever you want to receive the items from the supplier you have to make a receipt what is receipt is a document which is the proof of receiving the item from the supplier and we have returns whatever the item you re you received if you don't like you have to return it receiving transaction what are the item you received you prepared a document does it mean that you received that item completely no initially it is receipt receipt has been made but item has been not received for that we have to do the receiving transaction that receiving transaction is nothing bad delivering the item to the respective sub inventory I told you in the multi arc structure business group ledger legal entity operating unit inventory organization sub inventory then locators we have to keep the item in the respective store room that means we have to perform receiving transaction that is called delivering the item to the respective location okay now sub inventory transfer we have we are going to see in the system okay don't be bothered like just I'm explaining 
high level so that in the last class we can see all the detailed transactions subunity transfer what is subunity is a part of inventory I told you one warehouse is so big and where we will have partitions and each partition is called as sub inventory. Sub inventory transfer is nothing but moving from one sub inventory to another sub inventory. The real time example is if you take our insured building, we have business analyst building. We have ground floor, first floor, second floor, third floor. Entire building is called warehouse. If that is a warehouse for Hyderabad, we have ground floor as a sub inventory, first floor sub inventory, second floor sub inventory, third floor sub inventory. And I have certain items at ground floor, first floor, second floor, third floor. And I am paying lease for each floor. So entire building has been taken by one person. Now, due to the demand situations, you have, let us take, the ground floor is having iron material, first floor is having cement bags, third floor is having, second floor is having something again, safety area, safety items we kept in second floor. Then fourth floor you did something. You kept something. Fourth floor. Majorly let us say we are into construction business. So that business analyst building is a warehouse where I am maintaining all the construction company materials. So it is summer. So all the constructions will be going on. So huge demand. So maintaining the stock at ground floor, first floor, second floor, third floor, it is very easy. Because there is a demand, you bought the item, you kept in the inventory, as and when required, you are selling the item. So there is a huge demand in summer for construction material. It keeps on going. Now, all of a sudden, a rainy season has come, due to which construction constructions will come down then what are the items existing in different floors it is burden to the owner to maintain all the floors by paying the lease for them why during the unseason why should i maintain all the floors vacate two sub two floors i want ground floor first floor remaining floors you please vacate for how much how long four months so when you want the items at peak time you want more items to be maintained at in case that it's not the peak requirement like is not existing in the particular demand situation then you can reduce the lease amount by paying for first amount first first floor and ground floor and for remaining floors you can avoid for that reason the person who is working as store manager should take a decision to vacate the third floor and fourth floor and bring all the items into first floor or ground floor this is what subunity transfer that means moving from first floor to second floor or second floor to first floor okay so that is what sales order transfer interog transfer what is interog transfer next to that i told you the example is tata nano that is there at gujarat but you are getting the item at hyderabad and you are getting the item from gujarat to hyderabad coming from two different operating units having two different Interorganization transfer. So you are having two organizations like basically Gujarat and Hyderabad. Let us say you have to transfer the Tata Nano item from Gujarat to Hyderabad. Simple. 
it is intraorganization transfer and there is a miscellaneous transaction we are going to see and after that whenever you want to see set an item quantity okay let us say on hand availability at any point of time if you want to see how many items are existing in the inventory you can go to on hand you can go to on hand and select your item or respective sub inventory what are the items existing in one particular sub inventory it's up to you if you are not entering item it will give you the results for all the sub inventories if you give set an item it will give you only one one data like let us say i know the item i want to select the item select the item that is laptop percentage don't enter if you don't know the item code if you know the item code exactly then only you try to enter then you if you don't know the item simply enter the percentage and fine you will get all the list of items in which my item is starting with l i typed l by shorting off simply laptop this is the item i'm going to select find it will show you is there any quantity there is no quantity see if there is a quantity it will show you okay now if the item is available it will show you if the item quantity is not available it won't show you any output and if you expand here what is the organization and within the organization you have sub inventories and here you can see lpn serial lot grade grade is nothing but it's a kind of quality lot lot number is one which is used for grouping the items similar items to be grouped in one group why See, some of the cars, you know, during these years, every company, at least every month, we are able to see some of the automotive companies are recalling the cars. Recalling the cars. Why? They might have got some problem with one item. That item might be coming from one particular lot. Whatever the item has been shipped to whatever the customer, and what is the respect to lot we have to see in case the same lot then what are the defect you got right away the same defect might be existing in that particular item also you have to test and thoroughly and send it back again to the customer okay so that is called lot lpn means container what is lpn license plate number what is lpn container okay now what is serial serial number is the unique number what is serial number is the unique number what is unique number it is unique means it is independent and only only one number will be there no duplicates will be allowed when you say serial it's very simple what is serial controlled item what is lot controlled item every lot will be having an expiry date that is the reason shelf life days if you go to medical shop every medicine will be having an expiry date beyond that you can't use that item right so in this process an item which is serial control item is unique item having one unique number if you take car car will be having one serial number can you have two serial numbers no but two items coming under same lot is it possible yes both items can be manufactured on the same item so whenever you are using the lot by date wise so you might have given the lot number as that particular date okay so we have to understand when the item should be serial control and lot control it's a very important concept 
if you take one item if you take one item now for example car and a rod an iron rod I have car now and iron rod also I ask you one question which item to be serial control which item to be lot control it's very simple now we are discussing serial control and lot control I given two items I have given two items. Tell me which one is lot control and which one is serial control. One is car, another one is rod. Car is, somebody says, both lot and serial. And somebody says, rod is only serial. Okay. Then let us see what happens. When I say rod, there is a length. Let us say standard size of the rod is 10 meters. 10 meters rod we have. And we have defined that item with serial control enabled. Fine. So manufacturing people would require two meters rod. They asked. Then inventory guy, they have the stock, 10 meters rod. Okay, they gave the rod. They gave the rod, how much rod? One rod. What is the standard size? 10 meters, they have given. They are supposed to give only two meters, right? When I say two meters, I have to measure two meters and I have to cut the rod and remaining part we have to keep in the store and remain remaining part should be given to the request and if you want to cut it because it is serial controlled item can you cut serial controlled item let us forget rod let's come to car car is serial controlled item it is unique number right okay if somebody asks one car, I can give a car. If somebody asks 1.5 car, can you give? It's simple. You cannot. It's impossible. So car cannot have 0.5. What does it mean? Fractions will not be allowed. When fractions are not allowed, you have to make that item a serial control item. Now I may draw a serial controlled item, but requester requested for two meters rod, but standard size I have as 10 meters rod. As it is serial controlled, I have to give 10 meters rod. There is no option. Can I cut serial control? No. If you want to cut serial control item as a rod, then you have to cut the car also. You cut the car into two pieces, give one, one piece to customer. Let him take. Is it possible? Nothing. Simple. You have to decide when it is serial control item, it should be unique and cannot be divided. And whereas the item which is not serial control can be cut into multiple fractions. So rod should not be serial control. It, should, it can be lot control, but it should not be serial control. Car, yes. Serial control, but lot controlled also. Why lot control? Car can be manufactured on so and so date. What are the item you manufacture on so and so date might be having a defect? Not only one item, and what are the item which is having the lot number as date on that particular date? What are the item manufactured on that particular date will be having the same issue? Recall. That was the reason in the real time you can see in many newspapers Toyota has called 10,000 cars or 1 million cars 
in that particular Europe region. Why? How? They might be having certain lot. One item which is having one particular lot number I might be having a defect, manufacturing defect. And what are the items belonging to that particular lot will be recalled and tested again. We are going to see how to enable lot, or what, how to generate lot numbers, serial numbers and everything we are going to see. Okay, now this is what lot number, serial number. Then we have reservations, any item which can be reserved against a customer. And lots, we have serial number to be generated and all these things. And a unit of measure conversions. What is unit of measure? What is unit of measure? With what unit of measure you are going to measure the items? 12 numbers, one number. How much distance? How much length? Your item is having some length. 2 meters, 3 meters. So that meter, that number, that each, kgs, grams, these are all unit of measures. Okay, so this is how we are going to have all these transactions and we are going to see what are the transactions we can use and after that we have counting. We have cycle counting and physical counting. What is cycle counting and physical counting? The name itself is cycle counting. Count it and cycle wise means repeat it. Repeated activity of whatever the counting process you are doing that is called cycle counting Physical counting we have physical inventory you can see here This is one time activity whenever there is a discrepancy There is a difference in quantity. What is difference? In the system we have hundred items. Oh, you thought that system is having hundred items means hundred items are existing in the store you given you have you have given the promise to a customer saying that if we have 100 items how many items do you require i want 50 okay book the order confirm the order take the print of the sales order and give it to customer customer goes to warehouse saying that i have the order for 100 items can you load it okay based on the order he has seen the item quantity there is no quantity what does it mean means simply you give the false promises in case your system quantity is something else when it is not equivalent to the realistic items quantity so whatever the warehouse count the system count also should match with that then only you are said to be with effective system or whatever the whatever the whatever the transaction you are using by using the system you can't believe simply on the system in case your item quantities are wrong but it is we are all human beings here. You are prone to do the mistakes and then definitely you will be doing some mistakes due to which the quantity might have changed. But you have to correct it, right? There is a procedure for correcting. That is what physical counting, cycle counting, by which we count the system quantity and we check the real time system quant, sorry, warehouse quantity. And we have to make sure system quantity and warehouse quantity both are same. In case not same, which quantity should be corrected? It should be system quantity should be corrected not real item quantity why physically you have two items as per system zero does it mean that those two items should be thrown out no you have to update the system quantity zero from zero to two that's what you have to do okay so we are going to see all these transactions okay we start tomorrow simply like the straight uh, Straight away, we'll go to the transactions and we will do the transactions. We have move orders. Move order is nothing but a request to the store. And when you raise some, you want certain item and you have to raise the request and that request has to be sent to the store guy and store guy should transfer the material as per your request. So that transaction is called transact move order. So move order is nothing but request to the store and transact move order will be the action that that is done against the move order. We are going to see all these transactions one by one tomorrow okay you have any questions for today